Good evening, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, I'm going to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh. I want to give acknowledgement to the earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. I also want to give acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Pray that the Most High blesses this lesson today and gives more knowledge and understanding on some topics we're going to touch on this evening. Wanted to um, come and make this video because a uh, sister gave me a, a, a verse that I probably read many times. But um, with this new knowledge and understanding, the uh, information makes much more sense. And it's just amazing how the Most High can um, enlighten you. Even when you've read something maybe 20, 30, 50, 100 times, and you think you really have some a good grasp of information, then one day the Holy Spirit can be sent and just open your eyes to something that you never even saw that was right in front of your face. And that's what we're going to be touching on today. You know, the Most High has uh, really blessed me and prepared me for the mission that he uh, has me set on. And uh, as I hear all these different things circling in my mind, realizing that uh, Yah is my peace of mind. The old me is left behind. The one steadfast of mine you guard in perfect peace, for he trusts in you. Trust in the Most High forever, for Yah is a rock of ages. And when we're hearing all this noise all around us, we know that the Most High is with us, which is, you know, really stirring up the demons around us. And I'm sure pretty people are seeing demons coming from, uh, from all over, bringing attacks, things of that matter, things of that nature, <clears throat> unfounded attacks. And this is why you really need to search the fruits of an individual. Many people, you know, when you understand, you know, that the Most High has to be your guide and has to pretty much give you your direction, then you understand when demons are among us and when the demons are attacking, then you know that you're on the right path when you're getting attacked. Because, you know, if you're doing what they do, you know, you, they, there's, you're not a threat. But as soon as you start following the path of the Most High, then the demons show up and the demons attack. But that's okay. Because we all know that what is meant for our harm, the Most High means it for good. Let's get that real quick. And Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Get that real quick. <clears throat> but as for you, ye thought evil against me, but the Most High meant it unto good to bring to pass, as it is this day to save much people alive. And really, you know, that's, that is so true. Many times before, when uh, people were being negative, uh, you know, being disrespectful, my um, first reaction would be to, to be, do exactly the same thing. But then when you realize that that's what they were made to do, that's what these demons were made to do, and you realize that's their purpose, it's just to cause strife, to take the real people of the Most High off their game, to take them another direction, but to not do concentrate on the most high. So the more that I hear the negative attacks, the, uh, you know, being disrespectful, I just realize that those are just demons, nothing but demons. 
and you learn how to just zone it out, tune it out, because it means nothing. And I pray as you uh, get deeper in this uh, faith, brethren, that you, you understand that you're going to be attacked. You're going to be spoken ill of. Um, and that's just part of the territory. No one liked uh, Yahawashai when he was here, or very few. So, you know, that's just, that just comes with the territory. But I want to thank the Most High for preparing me for this and helping me to grow and to learn from all these different um, milestones in this walk. And many of the brethren that teach have to deal with things of this nature. So, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing, but with uh, more knowledge and understanding comes more responsibility and needing to carry yourself a certain way. Now, it's funny because I keep hearing people talking about the earthly mother. Now, I've made multiple videos expressing my points. And actually, the last video, um, I used probably 20 scriptures to substantiate my, um, my stance, given with scriptures and precepts. But some people still want to use one scripture that I already explained to say that um, the Holy Spirit is, you know, has a, as, as, as male. And it's uh, John 14, 26. Now, if you somehow think, if people think that one scripture pretty much negates 20, then, hey, go do that. Believe that. That's, to me, that's a very basic person in this walk. If I can give you 20 scriptures and uh, you give me one, then uh, that, that, that's not even worth having an argument. That's not even worth having a debate. You know, especially when I'm, if you can't do, if you can't do this, then you have no leg to stand on. This is Proverbs chapter eight. This shows you, in case, I don't know, maybe some people can't really see this right here. This shows you where John chapter 14, 21, and it's in red, so you just keep reading on down until you get to 26, comes from. Proverbs chapter eight, which is talking about wisdom. So that comforter is wisdom. But see, I've shown this many times, but if someone doesn't watch the video that I've already made expressing this information right here, then that shows me you really don't want to know. You have a, <clears throat> you already have a doctrine and you can't leave that doctrine because that's where the Most High has left you. And if that's the case, so be it. But if I've already shown you Proverbs chapter 8, which shows you that is the precept for John 14, 21. You just read on down to 26, the one that everyone else seems to love so much to use because it's a bad translation. This is not, that's not what this video is about, but I'm just going to touch on this point really fast. If you can explain this, please do. But they won't because they can't. You know how many people I've already had that says, I'm going to make a video proving that the Holy Spirit is a man and not a woman. And that video's never come out. I've had many people say, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove you wrong, but Judah, you're wrong. All they do is run to John 14, 26. And I've already cut that right here. So you, unless you got some other scripture, which you don't, you got one more over there in John, but that's still referring to this right here. So if you, if you wanna stay with that, that's cool. That's you. You want to bury your head in the sand and forget about all these other scriptures that, you know, the Most High has blessed me to be able to share the people? And go right ahead. Not a problem. I'm not here for you. I'm here for the brethren that are here to grow. And sometimes we've got to come off that doctrine that we've been given. I had to do the same thing. I used to believe that it was a he because it said he and John until the Most High enlightened me with this book, with these precepts right here. So you can explain that. If you can't, 
and just keep it moving. We got nothing else to talk about. Because like I said, I provided these 20 scriptures. You don't want to read it. You don't want to watch the video. You don't watch two minutes of a video and, and try to make a video going against me and using this, using scriptures I already kind of, I've already explained. Go ahead. That's you. Continue burying your head in the sand. It's cool. Like I said, this is why you can't go off of what people look like and just assume, hey, you know, he's Negro, he's us. No, he's not. Because I already told you guys another video. Abraham had at least nine or ten boys. Only one of them is of the promise. So we're going to have plenty of people out here that look like us, that aren't us. And that's what the enemy uses. That's what the enemy uses. He uses people like that to keep us asleep. So we do this right here. Oh, man, you know, Big Judah gave me 20. I'm not even going to watch that video. I'm just going to stick with John 14, 26. I'm not going to look at any other precepts. No, I don't want to. I don't want to know because I might have to actually come off that doctrine that I've been taught. So that's what you, yeah, there you go. Speak no evil. Speak no, in, you know, speak no new information to me. Don't show me anything. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to stick in the same doctrine, which is cool. Stay there. But when class is in session, we're going to continue to grow. You stay where you're at. That's not a problem. Okay? You know, your birthplace does not establish your kingship. Many people think this because there are a supposed African-American here in America that that automatically makes you a Judite. It makes you a king. Just like if being, you know, if you're born over in Haiti. That makes you, you know, you're a Levite. That's not how it works. You know, that does not make you, your skin color does not make you a king or a priest. The fruits that you produce will demonstrate your ability to lead and to teach. If your fruits are rotten, your soul is rotten. Your spirit is rotten. And you're not fit to lead. And you're not fit to teach. And that doesn't mean that's not what I'm saying. That's what the most high is saying. Because he gives you rotten fruit, you therefore you're your rotten spirit. You're rotten to the core. And you're none of us. Many people have nappy curly hair, like myself. Like I said, Abraham had nine or ten boys looking just like us. But they're not us. That's why you read that John 8 and 44. You are of your father, the devil. And these were seeds of Abraham. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing, you know, people that are their father, the devil, because you're seeing how they act. I don't care what you look like. I care what you act like. And many people's actions are showing them to be the devils that the Most High talked about. The devils that Yahawashai, you know, had to deal with when he was here. And the devils that we are going to be dealing with as long as we are here. But now let's get into uh, what the sister uh, shared with me. She shared with me um, this verse here. Baruch. So, um, Baruch chapter 2, verse 21. See, this is how the Most High has prepared me by blessing me with this Bible that has all these precepts so that you can't just read one verse and act like you've figured everything out. Check this out. This is a pretty eye-opening, groundbreaking information right here. And I've read, uh, I've read Baruch 2 many times, but never picked, on, picked this up. Thus saith the Lord, bow down your shoulders to serve the king of Babylon. So shall ye remain in the land that I gave unto your fathers. So it sounds like we're going to bow down and serve the king of Babylon in our own land. Like exactly what I've been telling people as of late. And like I said, this information is not something that I knew. This is something I barely came into. And I'm a novice at, at this point. I learned from others. And I have no problem admitting the fact that this is something new to me and that I have to go to others who have been here in order to learn, in order to grasp these concepts. But that's the problem with many people in this truth. 
they can't admit or be humble enough to realize that they don't know something and that they need guidance. I'm always growing. I'm not the same man that I was knowledge wise three, four, five, six months ago because I'm constantly growing from many of the brothers and sisters around me that have been uh, giving me more, most highs used to give me more information. But let's take a look here. Look at this precept Jeremiah 27 and 11. Okay, so it's actually going to get more clarification as to what is going on in Baruch 2 21. Let's read that one more time. Thus saith the Lord, bow down your shoulders to serve the king of Babylon. So shall ye remain in the land that I gave unto your fathers. So let's get that Jeremiah 27 and 11. Because I jump around and I'll look around um, those areas too, because then I want to find out what precepts are on those certain areas as well, those certain scripture. So we got... Uh, but the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let uh, remain still in their own land, saith the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell therein. Now, what I want to do is I want to actually go up to nine. Let me get this real quick. Um... Could give a little, I love always love to read around. You always want to read around those certain areas. Okay. Hold on. Let me make sure which one is this again. Okay. 27. Let's start at nine. Okay. Cause we got some more precepts there on the side. Therefore hearken not ye to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. For the prophecy, for they prophesy a lie unto you, to remove you far from your land, and that I should drive you out, and ye should perish. See that 10 right there? It's very important right there. So for they prophesy a lie unto you, to remove you far from your land and that I should drive you out and ye should perish. So we got these people that are trying to say that this is not our land. Our land is over in Africa. We need to go back to Africa. Okay. There's no way this is our land. They can't prove it. They just say that it's not our land. Even the most high gave us, gave Shem, Ham and Japheth all their land. These people are trying to say, no, and this is what we hear all the time from many of these people. No, this isn't our land, but, just, but it tells you right here. These who are going to prophesy a lie unto you to remove you far from your land and that I should drive you out and ye should perish. Because the Most High said he was going to protect us in our lands, in our own lands. So this is exactly what's happening right now. But check this out. If you go to um, 10, there's a, there's a uh, precept, verse 15. So skip on down. For I have not sent them, saith the Lord, yet they prophesy a lie in my name, that I might drive you out, and that ye might perish, ye and the prophets that prophesy unto you. So there's many prophet, uh, there's many people who claim that there are prophets. They claim that there are people, but they're prophesying a lie in his name, in the name of the Most High. Is that not what we're seeing now with a lot of these people who are... Um, saying that they're Israel and are prophesying and saying that, you know, they're here for the people. They're here to save you, but their fruits aren't showing that their, their fruits are showing that the most high did not send these people. And that's exactly what we're seeing right here. That's exactly what's being said right here in Jeremiah. Let's read that one more time for them. We're going to attend for they prophesy a lie unto you to remove you far from your land and that I should drive you out, and ye should perish. They want you to get out of your land so the Most High is not going to protect you. I made other videos about that, about him protecting us in our inheritance. And these people were going to sit there saying, yeah, I'm Israel, I'm this, I'm, I look just like you, so I'm you. But like I've told you guys before, some, sometimes the worst ones, and the ones we have to be more leery of, are the ones that look like us, the ones that know a couple of verses, know a little bit of information but they won't deviate from their doctrine. 
when presented with new information, they, they won't deviate because they can't. You remember like when we were in church and we started reading Deuteronomy 28, we started reading all these things and we started trying to talk to people at the church and they just said, hey, you know, be careful. You know, that's, that's going against what pastor says. That's because pastor couldn't deviate from his doctrine. Don't think that things have changed when we get into the truth. Now we got brothers that we get, that, hey, they play Israel. But you start showing them things like this, Baruch 2 and 21. Do they try to actually figure it out? Nah. They just say that you're uh, making stuff up. Or that does, doesn't go with the original doctrine, so therefore that can't be what it means. Maybe the original doctrine was flawed. Maybe that's what it is, but they won't accept that, right? I think this is actually really beautiful right here because, like I said, the Bible is explaining itself right here. All right? Let's read uh, to, uh, let's keep on going here. But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain still in their own land, saith the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell therein. Is that not what happened to us? We bowed our necks to the king of Babylon. We bowed our necks to our enemies. And then we were left here to still, and we remained in our, in our own land, right? And we had to till it and dwell therein. Remember, we talked about the encomienda system, how, you know, when the Spaniards got here, they gave our land away, and they also gave away our, our people. So they got free labor, and they got free land. And that's exactly what this is talking about right here. But check out this precept, though. Proverbs 3 and 5. See, the Most High knows exactly what was going to happen. And this awakening is a, is a process. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Most High with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. So we have to be able to trust the Most High, that he's going to lead us to the truth, that the Most High is going to lead, send the Holy Spirit, and she's going to lead us to the truth. And we can't trust in man. We can't trust in a man's doctrine that, hey, this is the doctrine we've had, and it can't change. That's what it's talking about. You can't just trust in a doctrine. you got to trust the Most High. And if the Most High is going to take you another direction, you can't be afraid to move in that direction. And that's what is talked about going on right here. Now, I'm showing you the precepts that were in the, in the scriptures a long time ago. They most already knew that we were going to be inundated with dogmas and doctrine. And that it was going to, be, it was going to scare people from continuing to grow and to learn. That's why Proverbs 3 and 5 is so important because it says, Trust in the Most High with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. So when someone ignores precepts and scripture that says something the total opposite of what we've already been taught and they just fight that, that's because those are demons that cannot, they are sit, they cannot learn anything new and they're sit here, sitting here to continue to make sure that you can't concentrate on just trusting in man and not in the most high. I showed you right there, right here. This is linked up to Baruch chapter two. Okay. Now, as we can tell, there are two different um, captivities going on here. Okay. Let me go back here. There's two uh, captivities. We had the first Babylonian captivity. And then we had a second one. And there's two very distinct, different captivities. What we want to do is take a look here. Let's look at 21 again. Thus saith the Lord, bow down your shoulders to serve the king of Babylon. So shall ye remain in the land that I gave unto your fathers. This second Babylonian captivity, we we're going to remain in the land of our fathers. We're going to be enslaved in our own land. Let's continue. How do we know this is a different one? Well, check out, what, as we read more, you'll see the difference between this Babylonian captivity and the other one. 
But if you will not hear the voice of the Lord to serve the king of Babylon, I will cause to cease out of the cities of Judah and from without Jerusalem, the voice of mirth and the voice of joy, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride and the whole land shall be desolate of inhabitants. Now, does not mean desolate does not just mean empty of inhabitants because there's people all over the world. There's people in that so-called Israel today. So that couldn't be our lands either if you're going to say that desolate means there's no one living there because there are people living there. So that's not what it means. Okay? It means that we will not control the lands. But we would, and we also didn't know that these were our lands either. But we would not hearken unto thy voice to serve the king of Babylon. Therefore, hast thou made good the words that thou spakest by thy servants, the prophets, namely that the bones of our kings and the bones of our fathers should be taken out of their places. All right. And lo, they are cast out to the heat of the day and to the frost of the night. And they died in great miseries by famine, by sword, and by pestilence. Now, that's talking about our kings right there and the bones of our, uh, of our fathers should be taken out of their places. Our people were moved out of their places. They were moved from North, um, so-called North America to South America. They were moved um, to Mexico. They were moved all over the place. They moved to the four corners. If you look at here, this is exactly what happened to our people when the Spanish came here and all the Europeans, all these other Edomites that came over here. Okay? So let's take a look at 25. And lo, they are cast out to the heat of the day and to the frost of the night. And they died in great miseries by famine, by sword, and by pestilence. That's exactly what happened to our people. The, by famine, by sword, and by pestilence. When they got here, they brought their diseases. Esau was given the sword in order to kill us, kill us off. That was his blessing. By famine, if uh, there's a story, and I actually have uh, shared it before, but um, in uh, Bartolome de las Casas, the um, Spanish would not feed, uh, well, actually, he would keep all these, uh, he would get all these natives, and he would make them fight for him, but he would not feed the natives. So they were starving. So when they went and attacked other tribes, the um, Spanish would allow them to um, keep the prisoners and eat them. So they were um, practicing cannibalism, but it was actually enforced pretty much by the Spanish. And that's talking about the whole thing with famine and when they were not giving us any food. Let's continue. And the house, which is called by thy name, hast thou laid waste, as it is to uh, be seen this day for the wickedness of the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So the house was laid waste, the land was laid waste. It was given to the other nations. O Lord, our God, Thou hast dealt with us after all thy goodness and according to all that, uh, that great mercy of thine. As thou spakest by thy servant Moses in the day when thou didst command him to write thy law before the children of Israel, saying, If ye will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. We were a huge number. And that's exactly what um, the accounts were when the Europeans got here. And the Bartholomé de las Casas was talking about how the lands were teeming with life. They were the most inhabited in the world. There were so many people in such a small, you know, plot of land because we were, ha we had so many kids. You know, and, that, and then when the Mosai sent these curses on us, many of us were killed off. We became a small number. But let's continue with 30. This is how we can tell the difference between this Babylonian captivity and the previous one. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. That is the key. This is the second. This is talking about the second Babylonian captivity. Because in the first Babylonian captivity, we did not forget who we were. Remember, Daniel rose up high in the Babylonian system, but he was also following his laws. Remember, when he got there, he wanted to eat his own food. And he asked the king to eat his own food so he could show you know, how healthy, healthy he was by eating our, our own diet. 
the diet that we'd always followed. Everyone knew that we were the Hebrews. When we, uh, the Persians of Mede came over, came over and controlled uh, Babylon, took over Babylon, they allowed us to go back to our land. So we never forgot who we were during the first Babylonian captivity. So this is the second one. And the key is that in 30, we were going to remember ourselves in the lands of our captivities. That's how you know this is different. That's why when you go to 21, it says, thus saith the Lord, bow down your shoulders to serve the king of Babylon. So shall ye remain in the land that I gave unto your fathers. So we were going to serve the second king, the second Babylonian system in our own lands. So that's when you go into that Deuteronomy 28 in the 30s and the 50s, we're talking about them taking our um, the, the fruit of our land. And it also takes, they're also taking, you know, <clears throat> our work. They're taking all of that. Okay. So that is the difference between the first Babylonian captivity and the second one. And we were going to remember ourselves and our lands, our captivities. That's here. So if someone wants to say that that's not true, then you break it down. And you show us something different. But they won't. Because why? Like what did we talk about before? They're stuck. Those are the people that the Most High said that they he did not send. Remember that? And they're like this right here. They don't want to hear anything new. They don't want to see anything new. Even though we showed them where John 14 is, they're still going to use John. A little secret. They're still going to use John 14, 26 to say, it says he. Even though I'm showing them where it comes from. Because they want to do that. And they're going to do this. And then they're just going to ignore all the other information. This is your Baruch 2. This is showing you your 2. Babylonian captivities. The first one was in Babylon because we were taken to Babylon. The second one, we we're going to be subjugated to these other people in our own lands. And they were going to steal our resources and our labor. And they were going to move us in ships and however else they wanted to move us up and down our own continent and also all over the world. And there was, and I showed you here, Jeremiah. And you go to that 15 again. For I have not sent them, saith the Lord, yet they prophesy a lie in my name, mm -hmm, that I might drive you out and that ye might perish. Ye and the prophets that prophesy unto you. And that's why you get these people trying to get you so bad to leave your lands, to give up your lands. That's why it's so important. I mean, it's not that hard. Remember now, Edomites always say, what? Where we come from? All you black people came from Africa. Right? That's what they've been telling us the whole time. Go back to Africa. If you don't like it here, go back to Africa. Right? So now at the end, they just put a, a face that looks like you and says, hey, your land's over there in Africa. Has it changed at all? Has the doctrine changed? No. They're still trying to show that all black people come from Africa. Nothing's new. Nothing's changed. Just because they put a black face on it, the, the, the doctrine is still the same. Right? Don't read any other books. When I've already showed you in 2 Ezra 14, it says that there's going to be a group of books that everyone can read. And at the end, the Most High is going to bring other books only for certain people. Then those who are going to bring in more, more people into the truth at the end. It's all a process. First thing is for us to wake up in the lands of our captivities. Right? Let me get that really quick. Let me finish reading a little bit more of that. If I can find that. Mm -mm. Done. Okay. Was that 30? 
Yeah, for I knew that they would not hear, because it is a stiff-necked people, but in the land of their captivities they shall remember themselves, and shall know that I am the Lord their God, for I will give them an heart and ears to hear. Right? Because we're going we're gonna to need to have those hearts and ears in order to hear the truth. Because we're also going to have other people who are going to be prophesying something totally different. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity, and think upon my name, and return from their stiff neck, and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sinned before the Most High. We're going to remember that, their ways, our ways. And then, really important, 34. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. And that's what we're on the precipice of right now. And being brought doesn't mean necessarily being brought physically. It's being brought back mentally to knowing that this is our inheritance. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. So, you know, I think I've made my point here. Share some more information. Share some more of my understanding here that the Most High has blessed me with, and it's been um it's been a beautiful journey. It's amazing to see all these other um, people, like I said, um, and the growth that is now happening. It's just amazing to see because uh, the Most High is moving. The Most High is giving clarification, and the Most High is increasing our knowledge. And we should be growing. We should not be the same stagnant people that we were three months ago, four months ago, a year ago. Doctrines change with more knowledge and understanding. I changed a lot since yesterday. I didn't realize that Baruch 2, 21 and on was saying that. Didn't know that those precepts were there. So I, I'm still learning. I'm still growing. And I'm open to the Most High to change and, and, and to lead me to whatever direction it is that he dictates. And however he wants to send the Holy Spirit, and then she's going to guide me into this knowledge and understanding, it's a beautiful thing. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the uh, earthly mother, who is wisdom, who is the Holy Spirit. Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.